bringing this bill to the House, and I would like to commend this bill to the House. Thank you. Thank you. Before I call the next speaker, can I apologise for you having to work without the clock going? Well timed. Can I call the Honourable Christopher Finlayson? Madam Speaker, can I thank uh, honourable members for uh, their excellent contributions to this matter. It's great to see that there is a recognition across the House that even if this bill is not perfect and will need to be worked on by uh, the Justice Committee, uh, that the broad principles are accepted, namely the importance of clarifying the law uh, and ensuring that in a digital age everyone knows where he or she stands in relation to what can be done. I really appreciated the uh, contribution of the Minister, and I have to say, uh, on reflection, he's absolutely right uh, in what he said about uh, the reference in Schedule 2, consequential amendments to other uh, amendments, and refers to uh, the Employment Relations Act 2000 and the categorisation of the employment court, quote, as if the court were the district court. Because actually, uh, his analysis of the history is quite right. It is a court which is not part of the district court system. It's the equivalent for industrial relations matters of the High Court. And so uh, that's the first piece of work the Justice Committee will need to do to make sure that the definition of court recognises the employment court as a distinct court and not uh, as part of the, uh, of the or treated as though it were part of the district court. The second point that he made, it's a very important one, and the uh, select committee is going to have to spend some time having a good hard look at these uh, provisions, clauses uh, 26 and 27, about whether or not that is an excessive response to contempt involving a judge. Of course, um, they are matters uh, that uh, there will be submissions on, and hopefully there will be an opportunity to get the balance right, because as I emphasised and emphasised again, what I don't want to do is shut down criticism of judges, but uh, any criticism or any abuse that undermines the administration of justice and interferes with the rule of law. I want to thank all speakers for the comments they had made about the current inaccessibility of the law and the idea of putting all law relating to the law of contempt in one place so that people, as I have said, know what their responsibilities are, what they can uh, and cannot do. It is a rather odd position, I acknowledge, uh, for a government to take over uh, an opposition member's bill. Uh, technically, I suppose one could say this is not quite an opposition member's bill because I put it in the ballot. It's been done before, but it does raise important constitutional questions, uh, and that's why I'm happy for the government to take over the bill uh, and uh, work with them. And I, I think we, that sounds a bit pollyanna uh, because we are an adversarial place, I suppose. But uh, on these sorts of issues, uh, they're not really party political issues. Uh, it's important for the rule of law and the separation of powers that we get this stuff right. And so I will be prepared to, to work with them, as indeed the National Party will, to make sure the legislation's final product uh, is fit for purpose legislation uh, that will serve the interests of justice. So once again, I thank honourable members for their uh, very, very helpful and generous contributions uh, and commend the bill to the House. The question is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The motion is agreed to. Administration of Justice, Reform of Contempt of Court Bill, first reading. The question is that the Administration of Justice, Reform of Contempt of Court Bill be considered by the Justice Committee. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. The ayes have it. Call on members' order of the day number three. Oaths and declarations.